Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. I'm right in the middle of a project, uh, but I come uh, come across the, this portion of the project to where I'm going to make a standalone video, and that's going to be a video about building a set of fenders for this trailer that I'm uh, currently building. I'll show you how we're going to measure it uh, and how loose you can be with your dimensions. You just have to have enough allowance, you know, for spring travel and, and also for the size of the tire. This is going to be heavier than normal sheet metal. I don't want just a flimsy sheet metal fender. So I'm going to show you the highly technical way in which I approach something like this. What I'm going to do is just kind of look and uh, see what the height is. I've got roughly 8 inches in height to the top of the tire. You'll want to figure there's going to be a little bit of travel. The back of it will be 10 inches tall. That'll give 2 inches of travel. Looking at the diameter of the tire, looks like roughly 18 inches is going to be needed to go from there to there on the tire. Then we need to turn it down. So if we come over here 9 inches off from the center, and we drop down to the 45 degree angle, we can see obviously the last two or three inches of it is going to be vertical straight up and down. We also need to figure the width. So if we mount it to the bar joist here, the width of the fender is going to have to come out to exceed the width of the tire. I don't want it too crazy far out because I don't want it to catch my pants while we're sawing lumber. So I'll make the top of it 10 inches wide, 10 and a quarter inches wide. Okay, we determined that we need to have uh, 10 inches in height. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out 10 inches right here. To make it easier for you guys to see, but I'm going to mark it with that soapstone so you can see it. The very top of it needs to be 17 and a half in width. Half of 17 and a half is 8 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to measure off of this 8 and 3 quarter inches. Just pick an arbitrary center spot, measure back 8 and 3 quarter inches, measure over 8 and 3 quarter inches, and that should give you 17 and a half total length on top. Well, my card filled up, so I kind of got lost here and went ahead and laid this out. Didn't even know I wasn't filming. But at any rate, we laid out 17 inches up here at the top with a center line. Transferred the center line down here so that I get the full amount of 28 inches that we decided we needed because of the diameter of the tire. And from the edge of the 17 inch mark, I marked a 45 degree angle down here. And at that 28 inch mark off of the center line, the 14 inch mark off the center line, Square it up. Don't forget your earplugs. So here we are. Probably could have been a little bit narrower in here, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to use this as a pattern, lay out and cut a second one, then we'll go ahead and figure the wrapper, and then cut and fold the two wrappers for the two fenders. There's always a price to pay for paying for using used material, or old material. Okay, now that we have the layout of the fender, all we have to do is get, get the measurement around the perimeter. Four and one half inches. We'll go across here. Seven and five eighths. Seventeen and three eighths. Seven and one half. And the final is four and five eighths. So now we add all these guys up. Let's put seven and a half here, four and five eighths here, seven and five eighths here, and four and a half here. Okay, okay, so here's ten eighths, here's four eighths and four eighths, so that's eight more eighths, so that's, uh, that's going to be eighteen eighths plus three eighths, which is uh, twenty-one eighths. So we have twenty-one eighths, we're going to add two over here, and then sixteen to twenty-one is five. We're going to have a remainder of five eighths on this side over here. So now we add 17 and 7. Uh, 17 and 7 is going to be uh, 24. 2 is 26. 4 is 30. 37. 41. 41 and 5 eighths. 41 and 5 eighths by whatever the width was we had determined. I downsized it just a little bit from whatever it was we measured to, a, to 9 and a half. So if we want 1 inch turned down to weld to this guy here with spot wheels and then a turn down for a hem on the other side nine and a half plus two is eleven and a half so we're going to go ahead and uh, mark us eleven and a half inches 
So then what we want to do is lay out these measurements here at four and a half. Now seven and a half, 17 and three eighths, seven and five eighths, then four and a half. That's both fender wrappers laid out there. So we're gonna take our handy scribe. We're gonna go ahead and mark one inch. Okay, the notching is done. We'll go ahead and fold these up. I've got the corners set for overlap. So as they fold up with that notch in it, it should just get a bit of an overlap and hopefully be well just a little bit right there. Well, now what we got here is an actual sheet metal break. It's a 818 Connecticut, meaning eight foot, 18 gauge capacity. That means you can, at the uh, full length of eight foot, only fold 18 gauge material without doing damage to your apron and your bending bar, so to speak. But that doesn't limit you to 18 gauge material. For instance, my fender that I'm making here is roughly 16 gauge mild steel. You can use 16 gauge material as long as it's not the full eight foot in length. And this here is only 40, 41, 41 and 5 eighths inches or something like that. So that's no problem. The trick though, is you don't want to latch this down all the way, pull it down super, super tight because that could possibly spring your apron. And I don't want to go to the trouble of adjusting this because it can be adjusted for thicker material, but because this is a one-time bend on this set of fenders, I don't want to adjust it and have to go back to sheet metal. So what you do is just kind of hold this in place, not locked all the way down. And instead of just taking the, the arms and just folding it up 90 degrees, you have to sneak up on it. In other words, bounce it into place a little bit at a time until you get your desired angle of roughly 90 degrees. So you just bounce it a little bit. Don't put a lot of strain on the apron. If you was just to take this and push this straight up without this extra bending bar on here, this right here would just bend right down. It would bow down and then it would no longer be in alignment and you would never bend a crisp 90 degree bend again. So the fact that it has this bending bar on here, this additional quarter inch bending bar, it actually increases that capacity in eight foot a little beyond 18 gauge, but I still never, never trust it to go any longer than very short pieces. So there's roughly 90 degrees, a little bit less than 90 degrees. And now we're going with nine and a half inch fenders, so I'm gonna slide this out nine and a half inches. Now what you can do, you can figure what angle these, all these angles were, divide them by half, and notch out exactly half of that angle. So when you fold them up and match, you would have a butt weld joint to make right there. You can always do that. Uh, that's a lot more labor intensive and a lot more accuracy is needed. But in this case, I just want to bypass them. So when this folds up, it goes slides behind one piece or the other. So I'm going to take my punch right here. I'm just going to set that down a little bit. And as we fold it, we'll, we'll make sure that that goes where it needs to go. Now what you're looking at here is a, uh, a 422, meaning it's a 4 foot, 48 inch, 22 gauge brake. Again, and it's a box and pan brake on top of that. 22 meaning 22 gauge at full capacity. Again, because we're just bending short, short segments of thicker material, we can get by, but again, you don't want to stress it and strain it. Now, what this thing is fitted with, it's fitted with a, a number of different uh, teeth, so to speak, for the uh, box, and for the uh, performing different shapes of boxes and sizes of boxes. We have a series of two inch teeth, a series of three inch teeth, and a series of four inch. I don't know if they're called teeth or what they're called, but you can mismatch them, move them all around, you know, with an Allen wrench in order to make up the width that you need for the particular box or pan that you're fabricating, or in this case, a fender. So what I've done, I've taken the liberty to take three of these and set them with about three sixteenths inch between the two, uh, between the uh, three, so that I've got a little less than nine and a half inches so that I can put the fender in there and roll them up. 
Absolutely. So let's just raise this very gently. Approximately the angle that we want, which is eh, roughly 45-ish. Again, that's adjustable, so that's not a big deal. And you can see how setting that in with a punch on both sides allowed this to fold right inside the next section. And if we're lucky, the same thing is going to happen with the next piece right here. Roughly 45. The sheer thickness of the material makes it a lot more difficult on this because you have to compensate for that thickness. And there's the two fender wrappers. It didn't take much to get it clamped in place. So we got her stitched all the way around. Got all the angles locked in place, got it stitched inside, inside as well as outside, and even got the outside corners stitched. Got to do the same thing with the other fender. So here's the fenders, ready for painting from... Uh... So there they are, they're ready to install now. Instead of actually welding framework on the actual bar joists here on this particular trailer, I opted because we have these nice 5 8 rods here on these, these building trusses, I went ahead and, and just put U-bolts around those and in through the back of the fender with a little plate across the back of them to make them sturdy. Now, you know, a small guy could stand on them and everything, you know, but I would not recommend it, don't want to, don't intend to. But if the need arises, you know, I think a fella can. This, uh, this is meant to be a standalone video just on making fenders for a trailer, but it doesn't matter if it's a, a trailer for off-road or, or actually an on-road trailer. It doesn't matter if it's a utility trailer or a sawmill trailer like this uh, or just a farm trailer. It does not matter. Uh, this really a pretty good way to build a set of fenders. Uh, the attachment, the way you put them on, is going to vary with the type of framework that you have. Like normally you would go ahead and weld a piece of angle iron out here to give support and stiffness here. Uh, weld a piece of angle iron or maybe two up uh, vertically in the back and then bolt through those, you know, through the back of the fender. Uh, there's all kinds of ways that you would normally do it. That having been said, this is going to wrap it up on uh, building a set of fenders for a trailer. And this is Dragman 44, and I'm out of here, guys.